Hello, everyone, and welcome to the OpenStack Infrastructure Summit. Uh, we are excited to be part of this. Uh, I am Saurabh Sureka, and along with me, I have Richu and Hunter with me. Uh, we are part of the OpenStack team at uh, A10 Networks. And today we will be talking about the amphorae of application delivery and security with Octavia. The agenda that we plan to cover is, you know, we want to walk you through the journey of Elbas. Uh, Elbas has its own journey uh, since the OpenStack inception. Uh, we want to talk about the Elbas plus Amphora that we bring in that enables both application delivery and security for OpenStack. Uh, Rich is going to help provide an architecture overview, the interoperability, deployment, and best practices using Octavia. And if time permits, uh, we will have a demo that demonstrates the service orchestration and the per app analytics uh, that we've enabled uh, on OpenStack. A quick introduction to A10 Networks, uh, who we are. Uh, so we've been around for about 15 years. Uh, we have about uh, you know, 8,000 plus customers uh, and we deliver and secure critical workloads uh, at hyperscale. So we work closely with the leading service providers with the web scalers and the large enterprises to help with their application delivery and security needs. Uh, we are known in the industry for our best price to performance uh, ratio, uh, and that's primarily enabled by the uh, performance that we enable with our flexible architecture. Uh, we've been associated with OpenStack since 2014 uh, with the Neutron project. So Neutron was known as Quantum prior to that. And uh, we've both you know, benefited uh, from uh, the, the community. So thanks to the developers out there. Uh, and then we've also worked closely with our customers uh, to bring our services uh, on their OpenStack infrastructure. Uh, the Elbas journey. Elbas was integral to Neutron. Uh, as you know, Neutron is the networking component. Since Octavia, it has forked out. It has its own name uh, with Octavia. Now, Octavia brings in the concept of Amphora. When I heard the term first, I was mesmerized by it. So I looked up and this is the, uh, it, the word is derived from an ancient Greek terminology uh, wherein the amphora was used primarily to both store and transport uh, products like wine. Uh, and this happened in the Bronze Age around maybe 2020 BC. What better way if you are looking to convince you know, the, the technical mind share, what better way uh, or what better name to have uh, than the Amphora? So with Octavia, the LBAS is decoupled from the OpenStack development. Uh, this is important you know, both from development as well as from deployment point of view. And the Amphora uh, can run as a virtual machine, as bare metal or as a container. Uh, so this enables you know, the different type of application workloads and depending on your use case, you can run the LBAS uh, either as a VM bare metal or as container. Uh, and it truly enables you know, the at scale load balancing with multi-tenancy, uh, which is required in, in today's uh, application workload. So we bring in, you know, with the A10 solution, we bring in an LBAS plus. Uh, so it's, it's basically our shiny Amphora uh, for your OpenStack infrastructure. Uh, so a typical uh, mid to large deployment for OpenStack will have few hundreds of applications uh, and we enable three key things uh, for your application workloads. The first and foremost is the availability. We make sure that your applications are always available. Uh, the second is security, uh, both for the applications as well as the underlying infrastructure. And third, the important point is around observability uh, so the ability to have real-time view into your application traffic at a per app, per user level. So to expand on this, you know, when I say availability, uh, it's really enabling five nines of availability and five layers of availability for your OpenStack infrastructure. Uh, so the, the availability can be in terms of making sure your application is fault tolerant, uh, making sure the application infrastructure is fault tolerant, uh, the load balancer, the load balancer infrastructure, the namespace that is associated with the load balancer. Uh, if you have deployed your applications across multiple regions or multiple clouds, uh, we provide uh, fault tolerance across all of that. And this enables you know, the BCDR type of use cases. 
Uh, so if you want to have even intelligent traffic management for your applications, wherein you know, the infrastructure that is closest to the user uh, serves that particular user, so you can enable it with our uh, service. Uh, especially, we also enable the blue-green type of deployment. Uh, so this is important you know, when your dev team wants to push out some changes for a select type of users, and then you want to ensure you have a smooth adoption for your application. Uh, and thirdly, the, the custom application health checks that can be enabled uh, right at the HTTP layer or at TCP, UDP, the network layer, uh, or even at the application protocol la layer. Talking about security, we enable defense in depth posture uh, for the application workloads. Uh, so starting from the secure connectivity end to end between the user uh, to the application enabled by uh, SSL TLS, IPsec, so this is primarily for either a site-to-site -site or from a client-to-site uh, type of connectivity. Uh, then we enable application access management, uh, which is uh, providing you with single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, uh, enabled by our integration with the IDPs. Uh, the third thing we enable is the DDoS protection, uh, both at the network layer as well as at the application layer. And then finally, you know, protection from the bot or the malicious traffic. Uh, we, we also have the web application firewall that protects your application from the vulnerabilities of, you know, like common, uh, cross, uh, your common scripting attacks and so on. Talking about observability, we enable real-time observability at a per app, per flow level. Uh, this is done without having any kind of uh, agent in between. Uh, we've built the Smartin uh, at the load balancer and streaming capability uh, for, uh, you know, to, to, to our controller. Uh, so this enables uh, quite a lot of new use cases around predictive uh, analytics, providing with actionable uh, insights, uh, and importantly, around alerts and notifications that can be configured uh, easily. So all of this can be, uh, is API driven. So if you want to integrate this uh, into, uh, with your scene vendor or your uh, components, of the infrastructure, you can easily extend it yourself. So this solution uh, is enabled, uh, you know, our LBAS can run either as a high performance hardware, uh, as a VM, as bare metal, or as a container. Uh, we bring in high performance with our integrations, you know, around SRIOV, DPDK, so you can run our software as a single instance, uh, 100 gig. Uh, and then you get the same feature functionality across multiple clouds. Uh, we, we realize that there is a need to automate the workloads as well as automate the deployment and configuration uh, of the load balancer. So we have a strong support uh, of automation tool chain we enable. Uh, the other thing you know, we hear from our customers uh, is they are looking for a self-service portal uh, for their workloads. And they have two primary user personas. You know, this is around the NetOps and the DevOps. So the NetOps team is primarily responsible for the lifecycle management of the load balancer, and the DevOps are responsible for their view uh, into the application traffic, you know, so things like configuring WIP or just looking at the application health check. Uh, so we, we enable both those use cases uh, with Harmony controller. Uh, so that, so for if you have hundreds of applications, you can pretty, if you are a DevOps, you can zoom in to your specific application and get uh, real-time visibility about 200 plus parameters uh, that, that, that can be uh, you know, used for uh, advanced analytics as well as for alerts and notifications. So simple use cases, you know, if you are running into an application error, uh, you can easily configure a webhook uh, as well as you know, post a message into your Slack channel. Uh, so that way it will alert you the moment the incident happens. Uh, and this is enabled uh, in OpenStack as well as, you know, across the hybrid cloud. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Richu. Richu, over to you. Thank you, Saurabh. <clears throat> so what we're going to start off with is I have a few slides here to introduce what Octavia is as part of the OpenStack releases. Um, and then we'll walk you through the Aten Octavia provider driver. So here, um, Octavia is an operator scale uh, load balancer as a service, which has been made available on the OpenStack release since Liberty. Um, on the back end, 
Octavia uses the Amphora driver for scaling and on-demand load balancing creation. So a multiple of these Amphora are called Amphorae, and each of them can be deployed as either a virtual machine, a container, or a bare metal. What, it, what this brings to the table is it makes um, this Amphora driver truly supportive of different form factors for load balancing. And horizontal scaling is what differentiates Octavia from uh, its predecessor, the Neutron LBAS. Basically, it adds more machines to the pool of resources that it, that's made available, making it uh, extremely uh, supportive of the multi-tenancy for customer SLAs and security associations. So interaction with the OpenStack components, Octavia interacts with Nova, Neutron, Barbican, so on and so forth, uh, through the provider driver interface, which is basically a superset of the Elbas V2 APIs, uh, bringing the flexibility of flavors for uh, different sized VMs and also creating, uh, making it easy to create these custom provider drivers for integrating into Octavia, um, basically makes it uh, supportive of uh, modern cloud deployments. Next slide, please. Here I'm kind of summarizing the Octavia architecture into three uh, key components. Um, Amphora, right? The individual load balancer is called an Amphora. What's natively available as part of Octavia is an Ubuntu VM which spins up with HA proxy. Then you have the controller, which is essentially uh, the brain of Octavia, which has five daemon services running. Um, they, they are the controller worker driver, uh, the health manager, housekeeping manager, and so on and so forth. Um, each Amphora comes up with a network interface on the load balancing network. So what, what this essentially provides for you is a direct connection into uh, the tenant network so that you can access the tenant servers. Next slide, please. So as part of uh, the ATEN provider driver for Octavia, what we've done is basically consumed um, these, uh, the natively available Octavia APIs and uh, customized it for deploying, configuring, and managing ATEN load balancers. And in this case, ATEN load balancers get deployed as Amphora. So our focus with the provider driver is that we keep it uh, highly scalable, uh, highly available, and make it easy to automate these configurations, which are eight and load balancer specific. So the three microservices to make to make this provider driver actually um, easy to manage, deploy. What we've done is uh, built out our own three uh, microservices, which run as uh, you know the, the demons here, specifically the Octavia worker, health manager, and housekeeping manager. And we've also attached it to the ATEN controller worker. For um, SSL-based uh, secrets, we, we leverage the Barbican, um, uh, ATEN Thunder. And, and I'll go into the deeper use cases and functionality that ATEN Thunder provides. But this, in this specific case, it's the SSL termination, or what we call SSL offload. Next slide, please. OK, so here, um, so ATEN Octavia provider driver is uh, now available, and it's 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 also publicized on the OpenStack webpage. Um, the link here that we have is our GitHub page, where you can go, you know, sift through the documentation, also download the package. We have more uh, resources and links to resources at the end of this presentation. Um, this is just one of it. Next slide, please. Okay. I'm going to focus on some of our top key functionalities that we've enabled uh, for ATEM Octavia provider driver as of the stain release, uh, September 2020. Of course, there is a lot more functionality that we are uh, planning to enhance on. Um, the top would be that we've enabled today uh, is layer four network load balancing and configuration and automation through the provider driver. Layer 7 application load balancing um, through the provider driver. Layer 7 HTTP rules and policies, which then get, go, uh, go, get configured as uh, AFLEXs and bound to the load balancer. Uh, advanced health monitoring. Again, the, this can be application-based. Uh, this can be network-based um, for your backend servers and services. 
And uh, the speeds and feeds required for that, again, natively available through the provider driver. SSL offload or SSL termination, uh, we're using Barbican, as I mentioned, for storing the SSL secrets. Um, another, another key uh, functionality, one of the most popular use cases for um, A10 uh, load balancers through the OpenStack integration. The next one would be the hierarchical multi-tenancy. Now, this is a key feature, like we already spoke about, as part of uh, what Octavia brings to the table, right? So what we've done is enabled the hierarchical multi-tenancy, which ranges between your domain, your uh, uh, tenant, uh, uh, domain project, and your tenant. And this achieved through layer three virtual partitions uh, within the A10 load balancer, if it's to do with uh, the hardware kind of deployments. And uh, similar are, are individual VMs, if required in, in case of the A10 V Thunder or the virtual Thunder deployments. Um, so high availability cluster, of course, A10 uh, active standby mode deployment, and we also provide something called the VCS, which is the A10 load balancer clustering to aggregate uh, resources and provide you uh, more uh, throughput and more performance aggregation. Um, and uh, the HA, the high OT for redundancy and failover. Uh, with VLAN support, we, we basically uh, provide you the single aggregator, which can be split into multiple partitions. And then you could use differentiation of your customer engagement through the, through the VLANs. Um, and all of this A10 Octavia provider driver, uh, which can integrate into A10, the bare metal or the hardware solution, uh, the virtual solution called the vThunder or even our container solution. We also have the A10 conf Octavia config file, which gets into the more nitty gritties of uh, A10 specific configurations. Next slide, please. With this, we'll move on to the demo. And for the demo, uh, Hunter will join us as well. I'm Hunter Thompson. I'm the engineering lead for A10's OpenStack team. Uh, I'm going to be giving a, a demo today covering how to um, configure and orchestrate vThunder devices, among other things, uh, in, in the OpenStack environment. But before we get there, I'm going to show just the very basics of Octavia. So first up, we have the load balancer, um, which is just the IP address. You know, it's, it's, it's essentially your BIP. Uh, we have the listener, which is actually sitting there. It's listening for the requests that are coming through. In this case, we're going to have an HTTP listener. It's going to sit there on port 80. Uh, we have two backend uh, member servers. Those are sitting inside the sales pool, uh, which will have the uh, round robin load balancing algorithm um, directing traffic between them. Uh, also today, today, we're going to be showing the A10 Harmony controller uh, just to show the analytics and the traffic that are flowing through to the, those backend uh, servers. So in uh, this section, I'm just going to show the config really quickly here. Um, just that we have the controller worker, our health manager, um, and the housekeeper, which are Octavia uh, microservices running there in the background. Um, so here I'm creating the OpenStack uh, load balancer itself. In this case, we're going to be creating the VIP on this uh, provider um, provider network which is uh, just directed at VLAN 111. I'm just, uh, now I'm going to be showing that we have our Amphora created on the admin project. Um, and if you look on, on the right side of your screen there, you can see the, the journal entries where it's logging all of the uh, commands and information that's being sent over. So now I'm actually going to hand it over to Richu. Uh, who's going to cover um, Harmony as we are about to start sending requests from our uh, client there to the VIP and, and then onto the servers so we can get some analytics off that. Thank you, Hunter. So we are going to log into the Harmony using uh, your regular web browser. Yeah. Yep. And Aiden is uh, can run as a VM within your uh, OpenStack 
uh, post network and here that's what that's what we've done um, as you can see that uh, it, it is a per as I'll show you actually it, it is a per app visibility deep analytics uh, platform uh, which plugs into the eight and load balancers and uh, of all form factors across virtual and hardware and containers and gives you the, the deep analytics. So as you see here, we're looking at the cluster where we have uh, two of the eight and Thunder devices which are uh, clustered and uh, Thunder one is our, uh, is, that's the master and the active device. We'll go into the CARP-8 tenant uh, to view more deeper analytics. In the analytics dashboard, you, as you log in, you'll be able to see the, the inventory. Uh, and here in this case, we have the Infra Summit uh, demo. And looking into the analytics here, um, the analytics is you know, kind of divided across every layer of uh, the transition of the packets. So here you see that we have the first client tab, then you have the internet. Within the Thunder cluster, you have the cluster tab. Uh, if you had enabled web application firewall, which is the WAF analytics, you could see that in there. Um, ADC service is what we've enabled, which is the server load balancer, uh, the web analytics and details, which we'll uh, tap on and look further into. We also can uh, record and uh, monitor your server and application health. So first we're looking at the client uh, page. You can see the request location, the request methods, uh, the response codes, um, in detail, as you hover over it, you see more details. You can click on that and log into and, and get the, 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 step, the list of incoming requests um, and tap further into that. We, I'll show you a dashboard which does just that. Um, so the peak time in which you received uh, more requests in this case, we, and we seem to have sent a lot more requests at uh, 1400 today, 1400 o'clock today. Within the operating systems, you see that we have uh, sent requests from the Mac OS, the Windows, Linux, Android, et cetera. I think Hunter is also gonna send some call command for the iOS. Tell us more, Hunter. Yeah, I'm gonna just simulate um, an iOS command here. And then uh, we have to wait on Harmony to refresh. It pulls every once in a while. So while that's happening, um, we're actually gonna go back to the L7 uh, policy, the L7 rule um, in that. I had said that if we see a header with uh, reject and then bad request, we'll, we will just re you know reject and drop the request. Uh, so we can see that there. And if we you know change it up and we do something um, like a good request, it'll just let it through just fine there. Um, and now we can see that. Uh, And after refreshing, we can see that iOS has been added. Thank you, Andrew. That was that was really useful. Now we're looking at the browsers. We've been sending some curl commands uh, from uh, using Firefox and just curl, which shows up as unknown, and Chrome, of course. Um, and here you can see the throughput uh, to, to dig deeper into Per packet analytics, we also show that uh, here in, in the minimize tab, which uh, we've pulled up. And as you can see, the granularity is extreme in order to troubleshoot. This is an extremely useful tool. Um, you can choose across the browsers. You can choose across uh, the client operating system, the device, the client IP, the URLs, the request type, etc. And it gives you uh, all the packets that were logged uh, with, with these uh, selected details. Looking at the applications, you're able to tell the response time of the application, the application latency. This gives you a very good uh, detailed view about your application health, uh, something that helps the, uh, the app developers to look more deeper into top domains and URLs that were targeted, application servers, there's the server health and the server response time uh, itself. That brings me to the end of uh, this demo. All right, uh, thank you, Hunter, and uh, thank you, Richu, for the demo. Uh, this is the uh, final call to action slide. So, you know, if you are uh, looking at the OpenStack Octavia project, and if you would like to partner, uh, we are here to help you. 
so especially, you know, a lot of customers, you know, a lot of users are actually moving away from the Neutron LBAS to Octavia. Uh, so we'll be more than happy to engage with you all. Uh, so especially if you're looking for high performance VNFs or even for cloud native solutions. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of uh, people are, you know, looking for that consistent application delivery and security uh, across the hi hybrid cloud infrastructure, right? So we'll be more than happy to collaborate on that. And in, in below here, you know, we have some important links, you know, so uh, the email ID for any open source project uh, is open source at atennetworks.com. Uh, the GitHub, uh, the page uh, that's, that's actively uh, updated and visited, you know, it has the Aten Octavia project list here. Uh, the provider uh, plugin and the driver that Richu talked about uh, on the OpenStack page. Uh, and then finally, you know, the, the PyPy package, if you want to just download and install it in your environment. Uh, so again, thank you everyone. And uh, uh, this is what we have for today. Uh, thanks for joining.